And also to kind of remember that I think by the time you get to kind of midlife, one thing you know for sure is that you are a survivor. You are a survivor. And, you know, even if right now I'm speaking and someone listening to this is going through depression, they still have, you've survived a lot. And there is a way out through that depression. There's always a way out. And avoidance is not the way. The way is to face it because there's always a strategy to help get you out there. Hey, midlifers, welcome to the Midlife Makeover Show. Are you ready to break free from your mundane midlife? Are you feeling trapped in a vicious cycle of rinse and repeat days? No matter if you're experiencing a divorce hangover, job burnout, or you just have the midlife blues, I got you. Hey, I'm Wendy, your hostess of the Midlife Mostess. I too was hit by midlife like a freight train. I too felt stuck in the same dull chapter. I wanted the clarity of how to create a new life beyond divorce and the courage to leave an unfulfilling career. But I kept telling myself that I wasn't worthy and it was just easier to stay in my comfort zone until I found a little secret, the freedom to live my life my way. In this podcast, you will learn how to achieve a vibrant midlife mind and body, how to create solid relationships through love and loss, and how to create an awesome second half of life. Grab your grande latte, pop in your earbuds, and let's get this midlife party started. Hello, everyone. I'm excited to share a big update with you today. Over the past 90 days, more than half of our audience, 54.7% to be exact, were viewers and listeners who haven't yet subscribed to our channel. Studies suggest that making something easily accessible helps form habits. By subscribing, you're setting yourself up for regular doses of happiness, health, and healing. Your subscription means everything to me. It enables us to create richer, more impactful content for you and everyone else. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. As you know, midlife is a bustling time. We manage households, nurture relationships, advance careers, and raise children. These responsibilities, while fulfilling, can sometimes drain your energy and diminish your personal strengths. To help you reawaken those dormant powers and embrace the superhero that you truly are, I created the Superhero Quiz at MySuperheroQuiz.com. This fast, free, and fun quiz will help you discover which superhero mirrors your strengths and personality. Plus, you'll receive a detailed guide tailored to your superhero profile, helping you to harness your strengths and soar to new heights. Just head over to MySuperheroQuiz.com and embrace the superhero within you. Welcome to the Midlife Makeover Show. Today, we are thrilled to introduce... Lucia Santa Maria. Lucia Santa Maria. I love that name. Such a beautiful woman and a beautiful name. She is an image consultant who brings a rich tapestry of experiences and a unique perspective to her work. With over three decades as an award winning costume stylist in TV and film, Lucia has dressed characters and shaped visual stories, capturing the essence of personalities through attire. At 57, she embraced a career pivot, yay for you, that was both bold and inspiring. Diving into the worlds of NLP, which stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, say that three times, and life coaching to emerge as a transformational coach. Now Lucia dedicates her talents to empowering women, particularly those facing life and career transitions. In today's episode, Lucia will share some of the dynamic techniques she uses in her coaching from NLP methods that anchor and empower to fun and thought-provoking exercises, I can't wait, that challenge you to rethink how you express your identity through your image and your business. Please welcome Lucia to the show. Oh, Wendy, it's so great (laughs) to be here. I'm really excited. All the way we should have we should have hit record when we were just chit chatting because we had so many <laughs> good conversations. We'll have to uh, we'll have to just relive we'll all that. Relive them, yeah. I know, yeah. <laughs> it's so good to have you. And I think, how did you find me? Just on social? I was on Instagram. I was actually doing outreach 
and just kind of looking for people I found interesting. And I was really inspired by your story and, you know, that whole idea of like a mega pivot. You literally did a proper 180. And I was like, yes. And so I followed. And then I was like, I want to talk to you. So I reached out. Yes. And then, of course, like, I think I very rarely will have the time to do like a voice memo, you know, message back. And I said, Lucia. And you're like, actually, it's Lucia. (laughs) I was like, oh, my God, I love her. (laughs) Your accent. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can clearly see she's just an absolutely gorgeous woman (laughs) inside inside and out. And, you know, I just want to say, too, like going back to what you mentioned about like finding me and like, oh my gosh, like it's inspiring. Anyone can do what we've done and what we are doing. And I feel like when we see other women do that, it gives us permission to go, I can do that too. There's no freaking, I mean, there's, there's something that I think you said in the video on your website. It says you're one decision away from creating a whole new outlook. A hundred percent. And I think that is what is so exciting Your one decision is about, I think, finding your authenticity. Life kind of throws all of these seismic changes at us all the time. And our identity is constantly evolving and adding layer by layer by layer. And sometimes we kind of just lose sight of who we are kind of in our core. But also we don't really value enough how going through all of these changes have in fact enhanced who we are and that we are like badass, you know, we're incredible. <laughs> I know. I don't feel like we give ourselves enough credit. And I have to, I shared with you earlier that yesterday I had a kind of a rough day and I was like, okay, girl, we got to turn this shit around. I don't have time for bad days. Like I embrace, like if I'm having a bad moment, but I'm like, what can I get from this? What can I learn from that? And I think very rarely do we congratulate ourselves the things that we have done, become a mother, become a daughter, become a friend, like be in marriage, out of marriage, moving, careers, like it's all something that we're, we should be like patting ourselves on the back for. And we very rarely will go, girl, you did that and you can do this too. Completely. Yeah. I so agree with this because actually what tends to happen to me is that Clients have always seemed to come to me, I very rarely advertised, for some reason, just attraction from coming from out there somewhere. People tend to come to me quite often having gone through seismic changes in their lives. So clients have come who've lost a spouse or had breast cancer or, you know, have, a, you know, on a divorce or their children have just left home or, they're trying to navigate looking after what I love to lovingly call the ancients, you know, the older generation. And they're trying to sort of still have a bit of a life. And there's such a lot that goes on in midlife that we have actually survived. And quite often when people come to me, it's when they're looking to go, OK, what now? Like, I what, do, what do I do now? Yeah. And I feel like you either you take that moment and you become paralyzed by it and you do nothing or mm-hmm. you take that moment and go, I mean, what can I not do? Like it's, it's the possibilities are endless. And I we were saying earlier, it's like, yeah, midlife is especially the 50s. Like it's like you're in this ocean of turbulence of change. And the key is like you catch that wave, you catch that freaking wave, you mm-hmm. will set yourself up. For your mm-hmm. 60s and 70s and beyond. Totally. And you will have the time of your life in your 50s and beyond if you allow that, if you give yourself permission to just be the woman that you know you truly are. Yeah. Deep down. And I think I think too, like I when I think back of my breakdown to breakthrough moment, mm-hmm. and I imagined driving an RV across the country. And it wasn't so much I was just like, oh, I had this dream of driving an RV across the country. It was the woman behind the wheel. That was my dream. And I, and we talked about this earlier too, but it wasn't so much what I looked like or any of that crap. It was how I felt as a woman behind that wheel, knowing like I did this. 
And yeah. yeah, like I am free. I am empowered. I can be whoever I want to be. I can go wherever the heck I want to go. That there was no limitations. And that's what I always try to envision is that woman behind the wheel. Yeah. And that is exactly the type of work that I do, which is to help people empower them to really believe that this is where they are and just go get it. There is no stopping you. And there's always a strategy to be made to get you there. You know, yeah. there's all of that planning, that coaching happens around what are we going to do to actually get you to this incredible fantasy you have that is a further along your timeline, but we could move it closer to here. You know, you can step into it in a minute. I know, I know. And it's not, I mean, it starts out, I think, as a vision, as mm-hmm. a dream. Mm-hmm. But then you basically like, always think of like, you. If when I had my breakdown moment and I had, had, everything was just so negative in my mind and in my life and in my body, everything. Yeah. And I kind of thought about the Seinfeld episode of where he did opposite day, you know? And I thought, well, what if I just do the opposite? Perfect. And I start thinking positively and I start telling myself that I'm beautiful. And I start telling myself, yes, you can go and drive an RV. Yes, you can get out of debt. Yes, you can get through this divorce. Yes, you can do it all. Like, what if I actually did the opposite? Let's just, I always like my own little experiment. Let me just see yeah. what could happen if I flip the switch and I thought positively, I took action and here we are. I mean, there is a physiological change that happens to you around your self-talk. So, you know, you can actually, you could even play this little game with a friend where, which you and I can't actually do right now. But if you sit with a best friend of yours, you put your arm out and your friend presses down on your arm and you start talking um, real shit about yourself. You just use, well, I am so ugly. I'm really like... 20 pounds overweight. I'm exhausted. I am just not feeling up to this. I've really lost my confidence. And your friend pushing down, you will feel your arm just totally, totally go down. You do the same thing the opposite way around. And you say, you know, I am unstoppable. I am invincible. I am so bright. I have a million good ideas a day. I, and you just talk it up and up and up. And there is no pushing that arm down. Your physical strength yep. grows. What what are they called? The kinest, kine, kinesthetic? Is that yes, what that's called? Kinesthetic. Right? Kinesthetic, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Extraordinary. But the actual, um, the fact of the matter is that your self-talk genuinely can affect everything in your life. The way that you speak about yourself to yourself, mm-hmm. what is going to really configure your future from this moment on. It's so important what you say yeah. to yourself. I know you, you always say like, you're either, your mind is either your best friend or your worst enemy. You're Mm -hmm. either the cheerleader or your own critic, one or the other. And you can like, and you have that power to decide which one you go with. That's the point. I think catching yourself when you're doing that is super important. If you're just kind of like sitting there and you're having a terrible day and you're just, and you're starting to kind of negative spiral figuring out like being really aware and catching yourself it's like shit do I really want to ruin my day myself yeah. <laughs> like I'll yeah. be responsible for this <laughs> even if somebody else has really really you know messed with you it's still up to you whether they can ruin your day or not yes yeah so one of the things I always ask someone to think and it's really worth remembering are you the cause of your life, or are you in effect of what's happening in your life? If you sit in the effect, you're a victim. If Mm -hmm. you're the cause, you're the victor. You cause what goes on. And it's that simple. So there are times where something is going on, you just need to say, hang on, am I in cause or effect of this? Yes. So uh, another great quote that you had said on your welcome video Personal responsibility is what precedes personal empowerment. Totally. And that's such an important thing to remember. Yeah. And it's kind of, it sounds so boring, but actually. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I got to take responsibility for myself. <laughs> yeah. 
But you wah, know, wah, wah. I know exactly. But you know, t- taking responsibility can be like, you know, yeah, okay, I up, oh, you know, <laughs> okay, I live to fight another day. I'll try better later, you know, or maybe I had a really good time doing that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. I know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think, um, and that's key. I even, you know, yesterday I was having a rough day and I was like, okay, I I didn't point the finger out, which is was a habit is what I used to do. Well, mm-hmm. even though I would blame the situation, I'm going through this divorce or my brother just died or I have all this debt or blah, blah, blah. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. I have to look at myself in the mirror and go, you know, I remind myself of the uh, the serenity prayer. Yeah. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and mm-hmm. the wisdom to know the difference. And I always ask myself, I'm like, what can I do? What yeah. can I do to change myself, my thinking, my behavior? Because it's really like, what can you control? Like, if you want to be a control freak, then mm-hmm. control your attitude and mm-hmm. your behaviors. Definitely. And one of the most amazing things that you can also do, and it's uh, it's another little thing, I'm giving a lot of tips today. I'm in that mood. But, you know, another thing that I always find really inspiring that really helps with things like anxiety is the three wins. Again, it's about changing your mindset. So you can be having the shittiest day ever. And if you stop at the end of the night and just analyze every single thing that happened in the day and look for three good things. Now that could be that you stepped into the grocery store and you had a lovely little interaction with the guy behind the till, or it could be that you had a great phone call with someone. It could be you heard your favorite song on the radio, or it could be that you won that promotion at work. It could be something enormous. You finally got the contract for the house you wanted. Doesn't matter the size of it. But at the end of every day, you start to write down three wins. Do that for about three or four days, and you're going to start to look for your wins. And that means optimistic headspace immediately, you know? Yeah. And that's a great... Just having made it through a day is a win. (laughs) You know, on some days... That could be one of your wins. I actually made it to bed. Like, that's great, you know? So, um, so let's talk about NLP, neuro linguistic programming. Mm-hmm. Explain mm-hmm. what that is, what it yeah. does, and why we love it. Yeah. Okay. So we love it because, in the end, going back to what I was saying before, our language, the language we use, is essentially what completely creates our moods and our possibilities. And so, really, understanding the nuance of what we're saying to ourselves and how we can use all kinds of tricks with our own mind, we can essentially completely change the way we see our lives. So, you know, there are so many exercises. The thing that really drew me to NLP was the idea of accessing your unconscious mind because your unconscious mind, your gut essentially knows the truth. It's the core of you. It knows what's right from wrong. It knows where you're maybe even steering yourself in the wrong direction, you know, but it will also give you incredible clues for what it is you really want. Because I think like today we are just completely overstimulated from everything we look at, everything on the internet, everything on our TVs, everywhere we go. We're just constantly being told, how to think, who we are, who we should be, how we should dress, everything, everything, everything. And in the end, so we start to lose sight of like, what's going on in here? And what does she really want? What does she really believe is true, you know? And so the NLP work I always love to use, I was drawn to train in it, was because your unconscious, your subconscious will always tell you the real answers, you know? Yeah. And when I was doing it, I, I started to train because I had gone through, you know, yet another horrendous thing had gone on in my life. And basically, I've had one of those lives where, you know, I grew up as a little girl. My mom had massive mental health issues. My dad left, you know, I had a lot of violence around the home. So me and my little sister, we grew up as a strong, strong best friends, but like two little mushrooms out of the ground, you know, and it made us strong with a very strong work ethic both of us 
But, you know, then I had a lot of adventures. I was pretty wild in my youth, but then decided to settle down, married a great guy, then had a kid with a severe disability. Mm. And so that was a big challenge. He had cerebral palsy and autism. Mm. Kind of broke our marriage. We weren't really friends to one another to get through that. But, you know, so that was a big challenge. I was in my late 20s by this stage only. And then after divorcing him, which was, you know, a massive heartbreak because I had imagined this family in such a different way to how it turned out, I then immediately married someone else. I think in that way that you sort of go, oh, really nice. (laughs) And you asked me to marry you, of course, yes, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wasn't ready. And so that ended like a year and a half later, you know, sorry. You and I are so similar. (laughs) Like, and that's funny though, but it's always nice to hear someone tell that story. You're like, okay, I wasn't so crazy either. Like, right, right. You think you're doing the right thing at that time, right? You do. And, and, and then you're like, wait a second. But yeah, or even six months down yeah, the Yeah, so you remarried, then you divorced. Yeah. And then I got married again, and then I divorced again. And then I fell in love with a Spanish guy. He was like such a headache, but I was crazy for him because he was so, you know, unpredictable and whatever, passionate, huge, passionate love affair on and off for 15 years. You know, and he then proceeds to get lung cancer and die on me. Oh, gosh. I know. I mean, you couldn't write it. But you, these things just, these are the things that happen to us in life, these really huge challenges. So by the time I kind of hit 50, for me, I'd lost Mm. a parent. I'd lost my favorite aunt. I had gone through two divorces. I'd lost a huge love, you know, but I'd also had an amazing career in film and television. I'd worked with extraordinary people. I'd lived in over in Spain. I'd learned Spanish. I'd you know, I was constantly evolving all this time. And then life would kind of throw another like wow at you. And eventually you sort of pick yourself up and on you go again, knowing that there's always another challenge around the corner and mm-hmm. trying to be in the moment and have as good a time as you can yep. at the moment you're in. But I basically realized I hit the sort of age, you know, about five years ago, where I just thought, girl, you know, you've gone through all this stuff and you're always mentoring people at work and you're people are always coming to you for kind of like, you know, just chatting through life advice and so on. And I wanted to actually gain some skills around how I could use that empathy, but not to be overly empathetic, but actually more compassionate around how I could help empower people Mm. to pick themselves up and, you know, um, box on. And that's what inspired me to do this. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, I feel like as I look back through my life too, and then Mm. times that I've been knocked down and gotten back up again, knocked down, and shit's going to happen. Yeah. No, I mean, storms are bound to come through again and again and again. And it's how you handle yourself through that. And yeah, I mean, like what you said, it's like there's something is bound to happen. And then, but you're trying to stay in that moment of like, okay, you know, I mean, a lot of us, our parents are getting older, they might be getting sick, they'll be passing, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like there's things that we're going to have to, face we're going to have to deal with that one way or another but at the same time you got to stay right here and you got to take care of yourself and you got to do all the things that you want to do and also to kind of remember that I think by the time you get to kind of midlife one thing you know for sure is that you are a survivor you are a survivor and you know even if right now I'm speaking and someone listening to this is going through depression they still Mm -hmm. have you've survived a lot and there is a way out through that depression there's always a way out yeah and avoidance is not the way the way is to face it because there's always a strategy to help get you out there so yeah you you won't stay like that forever it's temporary there to teach depression taught me a lot right 
and I know to, to look for it now that if I yeah. feel like the dark cloud is coming in, I'm like, Oh no, 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 no. Mm-mm, we are not going there. Don't. Nope. <laughs> right. Exactly. And I can like flip that around. And like we talked about earlier, it's like mm-hmm. you, you grab these, like you'll have this toolbox. I think that's yeah. what's so great that you'll yeah. have all these tools and techniques that when you're having that bad day or when the shit hits the fan, then you're like, you know what? I know just the tool to use for that. And some things work at some times and some don't, but you just, you just keep, keep digging in the toolbox until you're like, okay, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. Hi, I'm Wendy Valentine, host of the Midlife Makeover Show. Today, I want to share something personal with you. At 45, my world turned upside down. I was going through a divorce, battling depression, grieving the loss of my brother, and dealing with chronic illness. But I want to tell you about a turning point in my journey, therapy. Speaking to a therapist was a lifeline for me. It was a safe space where I could express my pain and start to find my way back to joy and hope. That's why I'm thrilled to introduce today's sponsor, BetterHelp, the world's largest therapy service. BetterHelp offers professional licensed therapists who are available online at your convenience. You can message your therapist anytime or schedule live sessions via video, phone, or chat. I believe in the power of therapy because it helped me navigate the toughest times of my life. If you're going through a tough time or just need someone to talk to, I encourage you to try BetterHelp. As a listener of the Midlife Makeover Show, you can get 10% off your first month by visiting BetterHelp.com dot com forward slash midlife or choose the midlife makeover show during sign up it's all about grounding anchoring yourself grounding and getting back out there and also I think you know one of the other things I don't know if you've noticed this too but I think another really wonderful thing about getting older is that you start to appreciate those little miraculous things that you didn't ever seem to have time for before. So say you're really menopausal and you're not sleeping and you get up and you're exhausted and you're looking out of the window and the sun starts to rise and a beautiful little bird flies over and kind of sings something and is there on a branch and you just think, wow, I'm like, I'm actually witnessing this because I'm up at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and it's a beautiful thing. And maybe in my thirties, I never had time to stop and even notice this. Yep, exactly. But I think we change, our viewpoint changes as we get older mm-hmm. to really kind of go, I think we start to appreciate all those little tiny things and nature and stuff. Look at your life, your lifestyle now. Yeah, you know, it's so different. You know. It's all about, you know, some people, some women can be scared of the empty nest and Mm. like get excited about it. Mm. You'll have more time, more energy, more me time to go, okay, this is my time now. What am I going to do? Like, so great. And I had to kind of switch my thinking on that. I had to reprogram my brain on that. Like, I'm divorced. All the kids are alone. And oh, my God, I have no job. And I'm like, ooh, I can do any job I want. Ooh, where am I going to live? Like, then I got really excited thinking, like, I have this blank canvas. I can paint the hell I want. Right. Because I can't. I also believe that, you know, the menopause, for instance, which obviously starts way earlier than we ever realized. So we're kind of probably perimenopausal in our mid 40s, have no idea because we sort of think we're still really young. And of course, people are getting more hip to this whole idea of perimenopause now. But, you know, it all starts affecting you and you start to feel like you're getting madder and madder. And why can't I drink as many glasses of white wine without feeling like shit anymore? All these kind of weird things start happening, don't they? Our coping strategies don't work in the same way at all. I think when we acknowledge that and actually see the menopause as a gateway to wisdom and freedom, which I really believe it is, you know, I'm way out of that now. I'm 58 years old. I'm I think my last period was when I was 50. So I, you know, and it's been wonderful. Now, if I'm angry, it's because I'm genuinely angry. If I'm upset, it's because I'm genuinely sad. Then you really have to take responsibility. We can't blame it on menopause anymore. I know. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I've been postmenopause for a while now, and I'm like, damn it, I can't <laughs> the hormones. I'm like, it's just me being pissy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm just like a guy now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what though? I want to go yeah. back to a little bit like the so neuro linguistic programming. Yeah. Um, okay, linguistic is that language? Yeah. Like, so how, what is is that basically it's a reprogramming of the brain, telling your brain this is who we are, this is what yes. we're changing, or or you elaborate on that a little bit for me. Okay, so quite often what we will do in NLP is we'll do an exercise where we will get you to visualize something, and then the practitioner will start to talk to you with a language that is, what do you see, and what do you hear, and what are you feeling? And so actually you're really becoming incredibly conscious of by just those words are really triggering your brain to enter a different mental state. Mm, Interesting. So So it's it's kind of like a blend of like hypnosis and in a way, right? Like a Mm self-hypnosis and neuroscience, neuroplasticity, all those neuro words. Completely. (laughs) All of those neuro words. I didn't know I knew so many words. (laughs) But plasticity um, is the most important one of those words, yeah. I think. It's like that. Right. It's a rewiring, it. rewiring mm-hmm. of the brain. And it's all, it, it's crazy to think as advanced as we are as humanity, that it's only 30 years ago yeah. that scientists discovered, oh, you can actually rewire the neural pathways in your brain. So yeah. if your whole life you have been thinking, I'm unworthy. I can never do anything right. You can literally reprogram that neural pathway to believing and receiving. Yes, I'm a badass woman. I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. I am worthy of everything. Yeah. Quite fascinating. It's so fascinating. I did one particular exercise when I was training where our trainer took us on a journey to speak to your older, wiser self. Mm -hmm. And you go on a sort of timeline and you meet yourself as an older woman and you imagine who you are at this age and you basically ask her for any advice she may have. Now, this is a really fascinating way of thinking because you're taking you right now and asking 90 year old you, who in my case was ever so like Jane Fonda, weirdly. My like while she's doing the aerobics too, <laughs> but like she's like, "Girl, just go ahead and be okay." <laughs> totally, yeah. One leg up here. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. No, but I, I, I basically said to her, you know, what advice would you give me? And she very, very profoundly said, "Stop being so sad about everything." Mm. that was her one piece of advice do you know it was so profound for me because I thought god yeah you've been so bloody miserable about so many things that have happened to you yeah stop being so sad about everything Uh uh-huh yeah I've been thinking about that a lot lately of like how we it's good we all have a story our life is a story right your past is beautiful Mm. yeah exactly and the key is is kind of like to be in the story, but not of the story, exactly. to be in your life, but not, of, right. Don't get so attached to it that that is your identity. Yes, you went through divorce. That doesn't mean that's who you are as a woman, is a divorce. Like, pull the labels off. That's not mm-hmm. who you are. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, and I think part of like the reprogramming, it's the, it is the unlearning. Of the exactly. unlearning of what has been taught to us that if this happens to you in your life, that means you're going to be, that's not good. Yeah. That woman, like you should not get divorced. You should, you know, like all of these things, like you were saying earlier, like we're, we're flooded with information. Mm. We're flooded with the how to's like you just scroll on Instagram for five minutes and there's so many different tools and techniques, which is great. Mm. Same time. You have to go, is that for me? Is that not for, you know, I mean, I think about when I do this show and I have tons of different topics and different experts because I think there's something for everyone. Not one thing is for everyone. Right. So you really do have to tap into who you are, who you want to be. Yeah. And, and just, and take action on those things that resonates with you. 
not with your friend, not with your mother, your sister, like you've got to listen to you. And sometimes that means take doing something that's going to be like where everybody in life is like, she's gone mad. She has gone mad. What is she doing? <laughs> taking off in an RV. <laughs> The hell's she doing in that best That's thing? You know, you're stuff. doing the right thing for yourself. <laughs> right. when, once, when everybody else is like, she has lost it. Yeah, yeah. I might be onto something here. That's yeah. perfect. I mean, I totally agree. I think um, authenticity, it's like a word that people have become a little cynical around this word. I still love to use it. Um, I have actually made a guide. You can download it from my thing. And it is called Unlock Your Authentic Self. Because exactly what you're saying, Wendy, is like, let's go deep inside. We're going to look at all the things that, you know, challenge you, turn you on, excite you, scare you. We're going to face these things head on with different thought processes, different techniques. And we are going to start to just really look at who am I really, really now? And what do I really want now? You know, and authentically, we're going to have bits of us that are still there since we were children that we've forgotten about as well, that kind of come back to the surface. And then there's other parts of us which are really like, yeah, I'm going to Jack in the corporate job and I'm going to buy the RV and I'm taking off chow chow for now. You know? Yeah. And I feel like, I feel, and as you kind of embark on a new journey, if you will, mm-hmm. back to your true self and, and yeah. in your new life, there will be things that bubble to the surface that you may not like. I mean, okay. it's, or, or, and even it's, it's something, it's an opportunity to learn from it. Yeah. And even for me in just the last year, there's been things that have been bubbling to the surface that I kind of thought I addressed it. I was like, God dang it. I thought I, (laughs) but I'm like, okay, it's back. Like, why is it back? What, okay. What is it? Why is this? Why is it here? What can I learn from it? And how can Mm -hmm. I grow from it? And so you just have to give yourself a little grace, give yourself a break. We are so hard on ourselves to be perfect. I'm like a recovering person perfectionist myself people please oh. you name it I did it all it was exhausting mm-hmm. I don't know how I did it I guess mm-hmm. I, you know I'm like how did he do all that I'm like well, oh, that's like a pretzel don't yes. we I've got I've got two friends and we we always used to joke about like are you a people pleaser yeah I have been I have been. and our icon on our whatsapp is of three pretzels like the people <laughs> pleasers you know <laughs> you will bend into any shape to <laughs> Make someone else happy. It's ridiculous. And if I know once you're out of it, you're like, that was nuts. That yeah. was nuts. And then you then you realize, oh, that's why I married that guy. That's why I was friends with her. Or that's why I chose that career. Like, it's mm-hmm. crazy. But it feels so good to be out of it, to be able to look at it as though it was someone else's story. Honestly, like you're, not, you're not, you don't own that anymore. Like, no, that's just not me anymore. I think another thing that's also incredibly empowering to remember as well is that if you're going to go along with a theory, a one that I really believe in, which is that like attracts like, mm-hmm. you know, when you are, that's what you're always heading for. You're trying to head for a vibration, a magnetism that you're going to bring in what you actually want because, but you have to get yourself there first. Yes. That's where the uncomfort, the discomfort comes. Mm-hmm. And that's where the gold lies basically. And when you look back at relationships you've had and the ones that have been particularly toxic or difficult, when you really look at it, you say, what did I have in common with that person? Actually a hell of a lot at that moment. I know. Right. <laughs> And that's what I mean about taking that responsibility. When you take that personal responsibility, you start to become free and you go, that was my part in that story. Right. Next time I'm going to notice that. And because that's who I want to be. Yeah. And I think you definitely have to, you have to forgive yourself Mm. for the choices that you made that everything is the way it was supposed to be. And like you said, because when I look back at my life and some of the choices I made, I'm like, I can't beat myself up about that. I was a different woman back then. I did not know. 
Yeah. I, I had no idea to look for those certain things. Yeah. So of course I ended up in that type of a relationship, right? It's like, okay, yeah. now I know. Yeah. Like we, like you said, like at midlife, it's so great because you start to, you can look back and go, ah, but now I'm wiser. Totally. You start to gain yeah. perspective on your past. Yeah. And you can kind of look at it all and say, oh, yeah, as you say, I was that girl then. I was that woman then. Mm -hmm. I was seeking validation through this. You know, I was seeking, you know, a buffer through drinking too much white wine or whatever it might be. We, you know, we all hit these these roadblocks, all of us. Yeah. And it's all a beautiful I mean, it might be messy, but it's your mm. beautiful mess. Yeah, exactly. We're all yeah. fabulous, great big messes. Absolutely. So uh. me, yeah, on a plate. It's fabulous. Yeah. So you were saying earlier, we have, you have a technique that we can do where we can envision the woman yeah. that we want to become. Yeah. Let's, let's dive into that. I'm going to do can it. Can we do this? Okay. So you're going to do it too. So basically, I think for everyone who is listening, and Wendy, you don't have to do this, but I mean, really, I would suggest that everyone stands up for a start and just, you know, stand up, shake your shoulders off and just relax your neck and just get into a physically slightly more relaxed space and start to take some really good deep breaths in for the count of four. And back out for the count of four, really nice and slowly. And then breathe deep in, right down to your hips. Hold it for four. Back out again. And this time we're just going to breathe in for four. Hold it. And breathe out for the count of eight. So super slowly, this is really good for your vagus nerve. And we're going to do that one more time. Two, three, four. And back out really nice and slowly. Six, seven, eight. Now, I want you to envisage in front of you an image of yourself standing in a circle. You can see yourself almost like a hologram as it starts to come into sharp relief. You begin to see this is you at your absolute optimal best. And I want you to start to take in everything that you can see. So I want you to notice everything about yourself that you think is just absolutely wonderful. Your hair is in wonderful condition, shining and healthy. Your skin is literally glowing and your eyes are sparkling right back at you, looking you right in the eye. Your whole posture is straight and strong. You stand in your own power, your shoulders are back. Your spine is straight and you are Standing evenly with your weight across both feet, you are in your absolute power. I want you to have a look at what you're wearing. You're wearing something absolutely beautiful that really shows off your wonderful, strong, healthy and beautiful body. And I want you to just notice how great you feel in these clothes. How great you look. And I want you to now step towards this vision and I want you to step into the vision of yourself. So start to associate right in. And you're going to start to feel almost like a sort of fizzing on a cellular level of as you take on this absolutely optimal version of you. And now you can feel what it's like to stand in your power like this. And you can touch your beautiful hair, the condition of it, feel your skin, which is extraordinary. And you can see everything so clearly and your body feels so strong, so healthy. 
even you even know your internal organs are just functioning so well and everything about you is at your absolute optimum and I want you to hear what other people are saying about you and I want you to feel what it's like really really to be this absolutely excellent version of yourself and now from this circle, I want you to imagine picking up the circle you're standing in and pulling it up in front of you, shrinking it down to the size of a bracelet or a cuff you could put on your wrist. And then I want you to slap it on your wrist, hold on with one hand onto the opposite wrist and this bracelet, this cuff, like the Wonder Woman cuff, is what you can always use when you need to summon up this most excellent version of yourself. Now you can open your eyes and know that in future, when you ever need to pull on your true strength and your true belief in how fabulous you really are, you just do this and you can feel her, see her, feel what it's like to be her. Ah. How is that? Wonder Woman. Hello. Well, hello, world. This is Wonder Woman. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, this is Wonder Woman. <laughs> With my Wonder Woman glasses on. Yeah, you know, exactly. Hello. <laughs> that one is so cool. Mm. It's really, and one of the things I find so interesting is that Whenever I do this exercise with a client, they, it's so interesting how they see themselves, you know, mm -hmm. and quite often, you know, it's not about things like, am I 20 pounds lighter? It's actually, I am me, but I am strong and I am fit and I am beautiful and okay, you know, maybe my tits are perky or whatever, <laughs> but you know, actually, <laughs> I, and I'm in a sort of, and quite often people surprise themselves what they're wearing. I don't know. Describe to us how you were looking, Wendy. I'd love so to know. I actually, you know, I, I was trying not to overthink it. Right. I was trying not to uh, manipulate the vision. Yeah. Yeah. I was just allowing the vision to come into play. Yeah. And I was on stage. Right. In front of, like hundreds of people. Right. They were laughing because I'm hoping to make them laugh. Yeah, um, and I was in one of my favorite dresses. Uh, it's a it's a Kate Spade. It's kind of like a coral, bright coral, A-line, you know, yeah. which I love because yeah. it can fit my hips in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was very comfortable and at ease. Mm -hmm. And I loved being in that moment and being Wendy and sharing Wendy and, mm -hmm. and not concerning myself with what if I screw up my speech or, oops, there's a, there's a yeah. on the screen <laughs> or what, <laughs> or what are people thinking or um, is my dress okay? Or, you know, all of that crap that you, yeah. we all like just bombard our brains with that is just pointless. And I was being, I guess, is what I'm saying. I was just being. Perfect. Hmm. And that is the thing, is we is to allow yourself to just be, but also just be your best. That's what you're imagining. You're allowing yourself to see yourself at your very best. Normally, when we look in the mirror, we immediately zone in on the imperfections. Mm -hmm. if we all do even if we're feeling really confident we will still go oh stretch marks on my tummy or yeah. oh you know oh am I sure about these jobs? you know we just do even on a good day I know but I know this exercise is like seeing everything you know heightened and like you know a Hollywood star on a screen this is you this is actually you and you're sparkling and you're shimmering and it's incredible and it's incredibly empowering and actually it's useful for anything. You know, you're going to a job interview or you're going to you go rock climbing for the first time. You're going on a first date with somebody, any of it, any of it. You can do this anchor and just remember you are incredible and just see yourself that way. It's one. You are incredible, my dear. <laughs> I, I really 
Our, I've enjoyed our chat, even with our uh, mix up with the. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, wait. Sometimes uh, when that happens, it, it on my end, it always feels like God, it's like an hour's gone by that that happened. It's usually, and then when I replay it, I'm like, oh God, when he was only 10 seconds, you know. So right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. But obviously, yeah. so where can we find Lucia Santa Maria? Yeah. Okay. So if you go to Instagram and you just go looking for image identity coach, my name's Lucia Santa Maria. You will find me right there. There's a link tree right there. Hit on that and you can have everything. Download my guide. That's completely free. Book a discovery call. That's also free for 60 minutes. Oh, nice. And that's, a, yeah, it's completely cool to have, come and have a chat with me. Um, there's a calendar there. You can lock yourself into an appointment. And then there's all the brochures on my different courses. And there's articles I've written that are about image, about identity, all of that. So there's a, a lot to peruse and enjoy, hopefully. <laughs> wow. So from co costume designer to life designer. Yeah, basically, that's it. You know, working with, I mean, I was very lucky. I worked with some incredible people. I've worked with Kim Cottrell, David Schwimmer, you know, Joanna Lumley. Real nation sweethearts. I've been so lucky. Um, but, you know, I've learned such a lot also from working with the I see I've seen people at their more vulnerable and I've seen them at their really strongest performing. And, you know, you know, we're all just human and we all have capacity to be enormously successful as well. You know, if you, I mean, I love metaphors, but if you think about it, like with costumes, mm. I was, why I always love Halloween because you can be whatever you want to be. Completely. You choose your costume that you yeah. show to the world. Yeah, you... exactly. And the nuance of that, and we all do that every day as well. You know, yeah. that's, that's completely it. We, you know, we're reading stuff off each other nonstop. So that's also really exciting, kind of part of what I do. And I really enjoy also taking people. So I also have packages of image consultancy, which I can also do on Zoom. And I just will get people, again, to a really strong confidence space and then work through their wardrobe, see where the little holes might be to elevate, make them feel more relevant, more current, whatever. Um, so, yeah, all kinds of stuff, really. Thank you so much. This has been great. I, I'm wearing my Wonder Woman costume. You are looking <laughs> very Wonder Woman today. Always, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Wendy. And yeah. yeah. Everyone have a great day and put on your 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 Wonder Woman cuff. Absolutely. You got this. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Did this podcast inspire you, challenge you, trigger you to make a change or spit out your coffee laughing? Good then there are three ways you can thank me. Number one, you can leave a written review of this podcast on Apple iTunes. Number two, you can take a screenshot of the episode and share it on the social media and tag me, Wendy Valentine. Number three, share it with another midlifer that needs a makeover. You know who I'm talking about. Thank you so much for listening to the show. Get out there and be bold, be free, be you.